based on what I, I heard uh, before all these uh, great presentations um, about livestock, poultry, chicken and eggs, and other topics, uh, I, I think I'll be back to uh, the old and noble field of agriculture, uh, which is so important. Um, and I would like to reflect about uh, how at Samren, uh, we are dealing with uh, scaling technologies we have developed, refined, or tested during the last four years. Uh, briefly, uh, Samren includes seven core projects in 13 countries, including Nepal, and four cross-cutting additional projects on gender, uh, technology networks, um, uh, economic impact, and soil quality. Uh, the common theme to all uh, Sunrem projects e is conservation agriculture that entails minimizing soil disturbance from tillage, maintaining a year-round soil cover if possible, and using crop rotations or mixtures in different combinations. Some have recently, have recently uh, proposed a fourth principle, appropriate use of fertilizer. Of course, there is a big debate about that but this may be particularly uh, appropriate for uh, soils that are highly depleted of nutrients, like uh, many in Africa, and especially where uh, soil um, where uh, residues cannot be uh, generated or maintained in, in large amounts. Um, I don't want to go you to 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 go through this uh, busy slide. The whole point of that, and I think I'll be the first one today using the, the pointer. I think I, I became ad addicted to use the pointer <laughs> and some time ago. And the whole point of this slide is uh, to indicate that uh, at Sunren, uh, we understand that conservation agriculture is just one component of a multi wedged approach to promote sustainable intensification and create resilient agroecosystems. So, um, Within the three uh, domains of uh, biophysical science, socioeconomic, and, and genetic, our project also includes other components like perennial agriculture, water harvesting, agroforestry, integrated soil fertility management, IPM, uh, microfinance, uh, um, uh, analysis of market access, women empowerment. And we don't do genetic improvement uh, per se, but uh, when possible, we uh, promote improved seeds, new varieties, and neglected uh, crops. Sun rain is finished in September of 2014, so we think it's uh, particularly appropriate to, um, to uh, document and share the su successful technologies in the program to examine opportunities for uh, scaling up, to identify priority actions, and uh, to interact with uh, other participants in the, in the agriculture sector that can take the torch uh, and move forward these technologies. And recently, we had some uh, good news. For instance, in India, the Belmont Forum um, uh, agreed to support the scaling up of some rare technologies at uh, Orisha State. Uh, these are funds from uh, the National Science Foundation of the U.S., India, and Japan, and also the Inter-Tribal Development Agency, also of, uh, in Orisha State, is, uh, is, is, uh, has uh, sanctioned a project uh, on 1,000 uh, hectares to promote uh, uh, conservation agriculture, working with the Japan group. Um, and in Bolivia, uh, we have an excellent project, but the, uh, you probably know the government expelled USA from the country, so we cannot work anymore. <laughs> but the Magni Foundation um, agreed to uh, continue supporting uh, our efforts uh, there, the efforts of actually of the, of the people in, in the program. I hope that Mr. Morales uh, doesn't decide to, to expel Magni Foundation to, from the country. Um, I'm going to mention just two examples of, um, of, uh, of themes we have worked with, and one uh, is selected cropping systems, uh, which are crucial in, uh, in, in, in agroecosystems. Um, so uh, after conducting more than 350 uh, field experiments, 
um, and doing uh, quite a bit of research, we have some uh, cropping systems that are uh, bio, uh, biophysically fit, socially acceptable, and uh, financially um, uh, feasible, financially profitable. And we have spent quite a bit on economics of conservation agriculture. Uh, and actually, we have a cadre of uh, great economists like uh, Dr. Dalton, who now is the leader of the Sorwin and Millet um, uh, Innovation Lab. I would say that uh, most Sunrun projects have uh, at least one or two uh, highly renowned economists. So we have the numbers to prove that these technologies can work. So, for instance, for Mindanao in the Philippines, a good farming system is uh, that of, of two crops of maize and Arrakis pintoy as a cover crop. Another is maize uh, plus cowpea relayed with upland rice and cowpea intercropping, you can see here. And the trick is to reduce in the second crop of cowpea the uh, population density to one half to reduce competition uh, pre pressures. Not till um, work very well in the system. For West Africa in Ghana, uh, a maize and soybean rotation does very well with minimum till, tight reaches to harvest water, and there is a spectacular response to phosphorus fertilization there. As little as 25 uh, kilograms of phosphorus can really boost productivity there. In Mali, um, intercropping of maize, sorghum, and millet with legumes um, are favor with minimum till and um, water harvesting uh, techniques like the management of core de nivel shoots um, here. Um, we are now resampling um, ACNs that were established in 1994. The um, impacts on water conservation on soil organic matter um, on groundwater that benefit villages and women that now they can uh, practice um, vegetable uh, uh, production uh, is huge. Uh, and we're we are really very uh, anxious to see uh, the final result of, of that. Um, in central Ecuador, at, uh, medium with, in medium, at medium elevation watershed, a rotation of maize, uh, oat, and veg as a cover crop. They grow uh, together, they're planted together. And bush bean um, do well with non-till, uh, a little bit of fertilization, and, and herbicide. A high elevation watershed is better to go with the potato, veg, barley, and bean fertilization. Um, and because this is a steep line, you can see here, uh, we have uh, worked on using grass and native shrubs to uh, reduce uh, the ramp and erosion that exists with, uh, um, with uh, traditional, with conventional agriculture. Um, and I have a simple question. Uh, I think land degradation continue on Earth. Part is human induced and part is agriculture induced. And it's very hard to attract the attention of decision makers, of policy makers, even uh, for uh, USA mission people about uh, the problem. And my, my simple question is, if we don't take care of this, how are we going to develop sustainable, um, sustainable intensification systems and resilient system? Uh, finally, for Northwestern Cambodia, it's probably where we have more options available, probably seven or eight cropping system. And this is because we built upon the experience of our uh, collaborators, the French agency, CIRAD, that started in Delhi in 2004. We showed in Delhi in 2009. And, and, and some are biannual rotations of, uh, with different crops, soybean, sorghum, uh, with, uh, with non-till, and with some chiseling for cassava. And this, I think, is a great example why research is needed. In Kampong Chang, which is central Cambodia, Stylosanthus uh, was a very successful cover crop in these acidic soils. But we tried to transfer the technology to uh, the limestone-derived soils in Batangban. It didn't work. Uh, instead, Pigeon P was, was, uh, did very well. Uh, interesting, the National Research Council of the US is now promoting Pigeon P 
as, uh, as because of his uh, multiple attributes, and I was good to hear uh, from the India people that there is a, a program uh, by Ikrisat. We are not into the business of the miracle crop, the crop that will save all the, the problems of, of, of human beings, but it's, it's a very interesting uh, alternative. My second um, set of examples is for uh, it's about farming implements. We found that one of the bottlenecks to promote conservation agriculture is the lack of suitable uh, farming equipment. In Asia, there have been a phenomenal development of mechanization. Now there are 50 times more tractors than in 1960. But there are no, uh, almost no equipment for conservation agriculture. So our first approach was to import equipment from Brazil. You can see here uh, a four row uh, no-till seeder, which is behind the, the Sunrun tractor. So we need to donate to somebody because we are finishing. Uh, somebody's interested from Cambodia. And then this is option for a two-wheel uh, tractor. But this equipment is expensive and there is common problems of lack of maintenance and spare parts and technical support. So we uh, look around in the region and a company in Thailand jumped to the, uh, to the challenge and uh, built these two uh, two pieces of equipment, a uh, four wheel, uh, a, a five a raw tiller and a, uh, um, and a four raw tiller. And this equipment now, the retail price is about 75% of the Brazilian and uh, with the economy of scale, this can go down to 50% and uh, technical and maintenance will be really available. And I think it's the, the way to go, uh, develop this local uh, capacity. Um, other bottlenecks I didn't mention is the availability of uh, seeds for new crops like uh, uh, peach and pea, uh, stylus, and, and, and some other. Uh, so we are working with the small seed companies that are interested. Um, in South Saharan Africa, the situation is completely different. Still, on average, 65% of life preparation is manual, and in many areas, it's 80%. You see here, this is a reaching work in Malawi. It took the farmer 25 days to prepare the land, uh, which is probably about half a hectare in, in size. The ox plow is very common for animal drought. We say the ox plow is our worst enemy, and there is some uh, tractorization in the country, in the, this, uh, the subcontinent. But interesting, um, there, uh, in some areas there has been a regression. There are fewer tractors now than in the past. So we still believe that uh, animal drown is an option for many areas. I think we need to move these numbers here and here. Of, of course, ideally, we good to have a high level of uh, uh, mechanization, but it, this is far uh, in the future for many of these uh, uh, farmers. So our researchers uh, design uh, a multifunctional implement we call MFI, working with farmers in, in the Mount Elgon area in Kenya and Uganda. This can be used as a reaper, as a subsoiler, as a weeder, can be used by women with donkeys, which are easy to maintain and, and buy. So uh, they went through uh, like three iterations, working with farmer, technician, agro dealers, um, and this equipment is being used by a group of farmers in the area, and it's being tested in Mozambique and Uganda. Our next step, we will start in, in a couple of weeks, will be to uh, um, send the raw parts uh, to Africa and assemble the MFI there, working with the University for Development uh, Studies in Tamale, uh, Ghana. All this equipment was built in, in, in Iowa. And the next step will be to have this manufactured in Africa. We visit some companies, and the companies were interested. Some then say, okay, uh, leave the uh, unit and we'll copy and we'll sell. But um, it's, not, it's not much a problem of a proprietary uh, um, uh, rights and so forth, but it's a problem of uh, standards, uh, of uh, uh, work safety. We cannot support a certain kind of uh, uh, 
uh, producing a, a, a low quality a piece of equipment uh, under unsafe condition. In the case of Ghana, we're also providing welding training, uh, marketing, uh, some marketing um, support, and, and also uh, safe working conditions. So, um, this is, I think, this is a, it's fairly theoretical, but we have a technology network uh, cross cutting projects, and the results are very interesting. Um, uh, the researchers look at the beliefs, expectations, and interaction between the participants in the, uh, in the agriculture networks. Uh, people are subjected to questions like uh, uh, com co um, conventional tillage cost land degradation, and you can see uh, a, a wide a range of answers. And people in this community have different degree of influence, shown here by the size of this square, the call centrality in the jargon, etc. Um, I would say it's still fairly basic. We haven't moved to an applied um, um, development, but uh, we believe it's very important to understand these uh, networks to uh, scale up uh, technologies. Um, so my last thoughts is that uh, uh, technology transfer strategies and funding for scaling up should be included since inception in these programs. Uh, in the case of SANREN, our main focus uh, has been research and education. We invested 35% of our funding in students. The rest went to short-term training and, I say, uh, a very extensive uh, array of uh, research efforts. So um, scaling up and, and technology transfer was like an afterthought uh, for us. And also we're very limited in terms of funding. That should be, I think, uh, include from inception in the programs. Um, new knowledge and information should be documented and shared during the program closing <coughs> phase. In, for some programs, it's really s difficult to, to find uh, what they produce and where this information was available. And also, um, I think we need multi asian technology networks, and I think it's a very little example, but it's a good example of, of that, the uh, design of the, the development of the multifunctional implement. We, we started with the partner from the very beginning instead of following the, the <coughs> typical linear extension uh, pathways. So uh, thank you for your attention. To learn more, please visit agrilinks.org and feedthefuture.gov.